I want you to stop right there. If you're not really familiar with series and parallel circuits, this video is not going to be really helpful for you. You want to check out one of those first. But uh, I do want to be honest with you. Sometimes on a Friday night, I like to sneak downstairs after the kids have gone to bed and wrap wires together like this. I get um, one Christmas tree bulb, and sometimes I get two Christmas tree bulbs, and then I might get three of them and join them together. Sometimes I do four and even five Christmas tree bulbs. And then I usually like to put them on a battery. So here's my battery right there. You know these suckers are made in St. Louis, Missouri? That's my hometown. Watch what happens to the bulbs though. Here I light one of them and uh, it lights up and it's like, oh yeah, that's substantially bright, right? And then I get two of them and these are in parallel, see? And they're pretty bright still, that's okay. And then I get three of them and stuff's getting a little bit sketchier. I just don't know. Now what about four? Ready for four? Can we handle four? Oh, yeah, I guess they're still lighting. And then five? Wow, five bulbs all wrapped in parallel. I guess the light, but let me remind you how bright just one was. This sucker right here, now that's a bulb that's lit up. So I began to suspect that maybe my battery was busted. So I put my battery onto a voltmeter and it says, check it out right there, it says 1.5 exactly. That's what you get when you manufacture in St. Louis, Missouri. You get a battery that reads what it ought to. And then I put a bulb on. And that bulb right there, I'm gonna light up the bulb while I'm testing the voltage. Do you think it can happen? Can I do this? Ready? And it says one, oh shoot. It says 1.4, look at that. It's down just a tiny bit. Is that 1.4? Hang on, let me figure this out. We got, uh, that line's 1.25, and, uh, oh, that would be 2.9. It's not 1.4, it's 1.45 volts. That's with one bulb, it measures at 1.45 volts. So each of those ticks is a half of a, um, tenth of a volt. Wow, a twentieth of a volt. Okay, so now if I've got two of these on, let me clip these guys on here and do a little voltage test while I'm lighting up. Uh-huh, and now it reads even less. Wow, that's a full tick down. So that's actually 1.4 volts, okay? Two bulbs, 1.4 volts. Oh, shoot. Now, these bulbs are all assumed to be the same. They might not actually be. Let's try three volts. I'll clip that guy, three bulbs right here. Clip them on, try it out. Oh, man. Here are our results for one bulb, two bulbs, three bulbs, four bulbs, and five bulbs. It seems like my battery sucks more the more bulbs I put in parallel on it. And I did the math for you already. What I've got here, this is uh, something that I'm going to call terminal voltage. Not like it's the last voltage, but like it's the voltage between the two terminals of the battery. you got a battery right here, then this is called the negative terminal. And this guy right here is called the positive terminal. Cool, so we've got those terminals right there. And I did a little bit of math. I figured out what the resistance is because the resistance is <clears throat> going to have a huge effect on the current. I know that one bulb, one bulb is about eight ohms of resistance. So I did the parallel, and you could check this also, but I'm thinking that two bulbs will then give me four ohms of resistance. Three bulbs gives me eight thirds ohms, which is 2.67 ohms, and then four bulbs in parallel, I got two ohms for it, of course, and five bulbs is eight fifths of an ohm, which is 1.6 ohms. So I got those resistances right there, so correspondingly we're getting more and more current going through the battery, and something is dreadfully wrong. So we're gonna have to pause right here, and I'll give you another set of problems so that we can continue. I'd like you to work those problems before you go beyond beyond. Get ready. All right, in order for you to fully understand how these batteries are sucking when things are attached to them, I've drawn for you four circuits. In this circuit, you've got a battery at 13.2 volts. You should just think of it as a voltage source. And then a resistor in series with another resistor. <clears throat> and some guy wants to know the voltage between there and there. And the same thing's happening here and here and here, except the voltage that's over on the right side, sorry, the <laughs> resistance, is changing from one ohm to 10 ohms to 100 ohms. And over here, actually, I'm just gonna tear this out so you guys can see that there's resistance in here. What would I say the resistance is if there's just a break in the circuit? I guess I could argue that that resistance, let me find the right color, hang on. I'm gonna say that that, this isn't even the right color. Ah, whatever. This resistance right here, 
is infinity. That's what a break in the circuit is. Okay, so here's my point. I'm gonna go on and I'm gonna give you some answers for this, but they don't mean anything unless you have actually done the work. So I need you to figure this out. Uh, again, I think you probably should do it by, you know, finding, um, finding the current that goes through the entire circuit and then finding the voltage drop across this resistor that's right next to the power supply and then doing some subtraction or something. Anyway, do that. We need to get answers for here, 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 and here before we go on. Look, I tried being nice. At this point, your education is up to you. You need to solve these problems because I am not going to teach you if you're not gonna put in any effort. Goodbye. Good for you, I'm glad you decided to solve those problems. So the answer then uh, gets me, I think I see 6.6 .6 volts on that voltmeter right there. I get a solid 12 volts right there. I get 13.1 volts right here. And over here I get 13.2 volts. When the circuit is open, I can actually read that voltage that the power supply is putting out. So I'm gonna make something conceptually happen here. I'm gonna put these things in cages. Like here, I'm putting this guy in a cage and I could put a bump at the top of it, but that's the same thing I'm gonna do over here. There's my bump at the top, and here's the bump at the top, because that is a battery. You need to envision a battery as having an internal resistance. Deep inside of the battery, there's resistance that you just can't get away from. So think about a battery like uh, a, a series resistance in line with some ideal voltage source because batteries actually have internal resistance. I guess you could think of it as the fairies inside the battery that are carrying charge from one side to another. They grab electrons here and they carry electrons that direction and they dump them off over here. They get sweaty because it's hard work carrying charges around. What, you don't believe me that uh, there are fairies inside of batteries? Look, FET says it's true, so it must be true. Good. So this is a lovely FET simulation like I was telling you about. Here are the electrons being pumped out of the battery and through the resistor and they're causing some uh, heat to dissipate in the resistor and there's a windmill that's monitoring the current going through there. It's a beautiful simulation. Electrons going into the positive side there, but we don't know what's going inside the uh, we don't know what's going on inside that battery until we click this link right here, show inside battery and told ya, fairies. Check it out. And um, let's see. Oh, I wanted to do a whole bunch of calculations with this. If you're taking, now you've already got a feel for this. Now what number is this approaching? 6.6 .6 if I've got one ohm. As the resistance external to the battery is increasing, we're approaching the actual voltage inside. So I'm gonna see if we can get that result from the equations. But we first need to make some definitions. I'm going to call this resistance out here, the external resistance, I'm gonna call it the resistance of the circuit. So this guy right here is the resistance of the circuit. That's what I'll call it for all my arguments. This guy right here is an internal resistance. I'm gonna call that the resistance internal, R internal. And this guy right here, I'm gonna call the voltage EMF. I hate the term electromotive force. It's dated and it shows that people don't understand that batteries are the same thing as power supplies and it's just a mess. Electromotive, what the heck? Anyway, the, the, the phrase still exists and a lot of people draw this as a script E. They really do. And they call it the EMF of the battery, the oomph of the battery. But I'm gonna call it the EMF in honor of those people who refuse to come up with a better name for it. So let's see, I've got the circuit resistance, the internal resistance, the EMF voltage, and also this is called the terminal voltage. Just as we saw in the intro to this video, the terminal voltage is the voltage that you can actually read on the terminals of the battery. So here's my battery like here, and it's got an internal resistance built in because of the ferries, but I'll never read the actual resistance, of, the actual voltage of the EMF unless I hook it up with nothing else hooked up to it. So in a active circuit, the battery does not work nearly as well. And the less resistance we have in the active circuit, the more current and therefore the greater voltage drop across the internal resistance. If I get an equation for that, then that equation, you're probably already feeling this, that the terminal voltage is the EMF voltage minus the voltage drop across that internal resistance. So I could call it minus 
the drop, or if I could go a little bit further, I'll say it's VEMF minus the current through the circuit times the internal resistance. I have a lot of ways that I've been playing with this equation, thinking about better ways to present it. But let's just uh, let's just start with that and see where we can go. Oh, I guess that one's going to jam out. Okay. So so now I know one thing. I know that the terminal voltage is the actual pushing of the battery minus the current through the circuit times the resistance of that internal resistor. But this current depends on how much resistance is in the rest of the circuit. So let me get an equation for that current. I guess that's going to be the pushing of the battery again, but divided by the total resistance of the whole circuit. So that's the resistance of the circuit externally plus the internal resistance of that battery that we can't get away from. And I'm gonna plug that in to up there and I'll use, um, I don't know, let's say, a, uh, green. And uh, the consequence of using the green will be that the terminal voltage now is the EMF. Oh, the green's terrible. Minus voltage EMF divided by the resistance of the circuit plus the internal resistance. But all of that, remember, has to be multiplied by the internal resistance again. So this lends us to do a whole bunch more math. I'm just gonna throw that on the way. That's just so bad. I could factor out the EMF. Wow, this is pretty bad too. I'll put these in parentheses right here. It's one minus, and up here I've got the internal resistance divided by the resistance of the circuit plus the resistance internal again. But if you look at this relationship right here, this thing that I'm circling in pink, we can abbreviate that. And you can check me if you think that I'm crazy, but this is actually one minus the resistance of the circuit over the resistance of the circuit plus the resistance internal. So I can take that and plug it into there. First of all, this one will cancel that one, and this minus sign here will be canceled by that minus sign right there. So I hope you'll trust me on the next page as I write in brown this time, maybe a functional marker, I don't know. I want to say now that the terminal voltage is VEMF times, now in parentheses, I just have that thing right there, the resistance of the circuit over the resistance of the circuit plus the resistance internal to the battery. This is a good place to reflect for a moment about what the heck's going on here. This is the voltage that I read with my voltmeter. This is the voltage that I can never really know unless there's no current going through the circuit. And they're the same if this is equal to one. So this would be equal to one if the resistance of the circuit was much bigger than the internal resistance. Then I just have big number over big number plus small number, that would be really close to one. It approaches one, that means, uh, let's see, goes to one as our circ becomes way bigger than the internal resistance. And that's reasonable if I have a resistance that's actually infinite, then the voltage um, of the EMF will actually appear as the terminal voltage of the battery. But I could also say that this goes to zero as the resistance internal becomes much greater than the resistance of the circuit. Oh, so that's the problem. If I try connecting it to a very, very very low resistance, like shorting out the battery. If I short out the battery, I suppose that that battery will struggle to keep its voltage on. And I'm gonna do a little video that actually shows whether the batteries heat up when they're shorted out. I wonder if they would. I kind of guess that they might, right? Because there'll be a lot of current going through. And the terminal voltage will appear to be very low because I've connected the two terminals with a battery, with a wire, Blah. so of course they will be really low. That's a nice place to go. I'm gonna go on and just chat a little bit more about uh, what we can do with this. I was thinking I might also solve it for, um, for something else. So I'm gonna take this guy and uh, multiply both sides by it and divide by the terminal voltage. So that gives me that the internal resistance plus the resistance of the circuit is VEMF, that's that guy right there, times the resistance of the circuit, and now I have to divide it by the terminal voltage. And of course, I'm trying to solve it for the resistance uh, internally. 
So I'll just add the circul circuit's resistance to both sides. The internal resistance is therefore VEMF times the resistance of our circuit over the terminal voltage minus the resistance of the circuit. So then I get that, to, well, I'm gonna just factor out the resistance of the circuit times VEMF over VT minus one. I'd like it if you could go through and figure out how this looks in certain limits. The internal resistance can be measured by this equation right here. Anyway, there are lots of manipulations you can do with this because it's got a lot of variables and a lot of ones and 